Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to this edition of the In the Bullseye podcast. My name is Paul Peck. I'm the voice of the Bulls. He is Maurice Linguist, the University at Buffalo football head coach. For those watching live on YouTube, we thank you. For those listening uh, on the podcast, we thank you as well, too. Mo, uh, based on the way I sound and based on the way you sound a little bit, we might be here, like, uh, judging our favorite choices of tea and honey, which is what we should be doing. Well, we talk about pounding the rock every day. (laughs) I have a limited voice we had a kids camp on monday in the city of buffalo uh we did a free youth camp we had a great time down there had about 200 kids turn out uh with uh with john fuller and jason martin and then wednesday we had our ub camp uh we had about 250 high schoolers show up so my my voice is a little bit shot yeah i think, I think yours is a little mine too. yeah mine's just a cold that but we'll, snuck its way in there we'll so we'll push yes we will we are here at the grand opening of the brand new floor and decor on walden avenue in cheek what an impressive place this is newest sponsor for ub athletics we thank them this place is pretty amazing as you walked in i'm sure you saw it i know i did uh you got if uh, stacy has any plans for uh some upgrades over at the linguist house uh, yeah, told, on the flooring I, front i told miss stacy we were shooting in studio <laughs> no idea ideas it's actually beautiful in here it's it really, really nice, is very it, nice it really is so this is an impressive place so if you've got any plans to uh, do some work around the house this should absolutely be your first place to go now he's going to be awfully busy so i don't know that you're going to have the chance to do a whole lot of home work around the home because we are on the brink of ub football training camp starting on uh report day is wednesday august 2nd uh, first practice is august 3rd give everybody a sense of you're in that little low between you're wrapped up the summer, you, you're anticipating getting it going. What's on? What's going through your head right now? Yeah, just, you know, two-hour staff meeting this morning. We talking about training camp roster, talking about identity, talking about our objectives, talking about our, the agenda, the, uh, the things that we have to get done throughout training camp. Had a really healthy staff meeting this morning. And, you know, year in and year out now, you kind of get to this time of the year. And, you know, the NFL's reporting to camp. I had a chance to uh, talk to a couple of NFL coaches I know and, kind of the mindset and the attitude of those guys going into to, to their camps. And we are one week away from starting ourselves and just excited. You know, there's, there's that excitement. There's the, the work that you know that's going to be going in, the, um, the uh, opportunity to kind of turn internal and hun- hunker down with your team and, and start forming your identity and your locker room identity, the play style that needs to be true. And, and uh, we're really excited about where we are. You know, the last seven or eight months kind of turning the corner from this past December, the bowl win going into the off season, being able to recruit a number one, another number one recruiting, uh, number one recruiting class in the Mid-American Conference, and uh, and then getting the, the the new additions of guys over the month of June and July over the summer, and now finally having your full roster here. Uh, they finished up uh, their last workout. Uh, on Tuesday, they have a week off, as you mentioned, and then we'll get rolling on Thursday with our first practice team meeting Wednesday, first practice on Thursday, and, and then, and then we'll, we'll, we'll take off. Two-pronged question for you as I think of the word experience. Um, your team has a lot more experience, a lot more guys coming back. You have a lot more experience. Yeah. This is your third go around, two and a half, as we like to say, after the yeah. crazy first year. So start by talking about how much better you feel about your experience as a head coach and then how much easier it now is when you have a real significant core group of players that know what you want. Well, every, it's like everything. Everything in life is a process. It's all It's all, It's all. all uh, one step at a, at a time. and. What you, what you want to do along the way is always uh, be able to reevaluate yourself objectively. I think the best leaders, you always start with yourself. Uh, you look at uh, well, what you need to do a better job of, things you can continue to build on top of, and what you did well and how you can make it better. And So I always look in the mirror first, and I, just, uh, I think it's always a growth process, and you're trying to find ways to do things, do what you do and do it better. Um, I think also um, when you look at your roster really objectively and say, okay, um, you know, these are my guys. You know, these are your guys. They're always all your guys, but to be able to go through the real process of recruiting guys, sitting in the home with them, uh, you know, this is, you know, you mentioned my third year going into my third season. This is also the third season going into uh, with Sean Dolak and I and the third season going into Marcus Fuqua and the third season going into Gabe Wallace with us and Tyler Doty. And so there's um, – 
the game is so much about trust and relationships and respect and and um, expectations and knowing the guy next to you and just the journey and the process of knowing your guys and knowing them really intimately uh, gives you that confidence. Um, we're, we're, we're in as in as healthy a place as we've been in been in as a program together um, naturally over time but because of the commitment that the guys have shown um, you know Sean Dolek has a degree in his hand he chose to stay Fuqua Gabe all these guys that are older Max Michelle they have degrees in their hand and by nature of just the way college football is and transfer portal and all these things these guys could have left they all chose to stay and it tells you about the real commitment that's going going on right now in the locker room and you turn the corner after spring football, there's a transfer for portal that opens, the window opens. Well, we were one of the few schools, I would say, in the nation that did not have a single guy go in. You know, Jalen Bass is back, Damon Williams is back. We have just a number of guys that, um, there's just a real strong connection, there's a commitment, and uh, we gotta continue to earn it along the way in training camp and make certain things true about us. Uh, but I'm really excited about where we are as a group. You mentioned a bunch of names that you just rattled off, and I think that ties into the question about wh who are the guys you rely on to be the leaders of this team? And, and is, that, is that a bigger group of players maybe than you've had before because of the continuity? I think the thing that's unique right now is that we naturally have some leaders that have really stepped up, that have taken that ownership role and, um, you know, being a captain, is not, it's not about going out for the coin toss. It's about really leading the guys in the locker room. And we've had a number of guys that are older that have taken on those leadership roles. And I think the unique thing is also we've been able to recruit, you know, a few grad transfers that have, that have had leadership roles at their universities that are bringing in a leadership, leadership capabilities into our locker room. A guy like Zion Carter, who's a grad transfer from – Dartmouth and a uh, Jair Stevens who's a grad transfer um, a Joe Andreessen hometown here in Buffalo who's a older guy that's gonna play significantly for us that's a grad transfer so I think the unique thing is is you have you naturally have that that development in your locker room and then you're also able to attract older guys that can play well and lead um, I think we're, we're, we're in a great space with those things one of the one of the big transition points for you this offseason has had less to do with the playing but the, but the players are more to do with the coaching staff right new coordinator on the offensive side in dj mangus new defensive coordinator in robert wright a few inevitable changes on the coaching staff which happens to all programs but but how has the transition of the coaching staff maybe invigorated you a little bit invigorated yeah. the players a little bit and what what do we what have you learned about the guys that are going to be in charge of your two big units yeah i'm just excited um I think anytime you make a change, it's an opportunity to grow and improve. And I really feel like, feel like we, uh, we, we, we made great contact. Like we got, we got in a really good space with those two coordinator hires with Robert Wright. Uh, Robert and I have been together. This is not our first go around together. We were together at Texas A&M. I know Robert, Robert knows me. My wife knows him. We know each other's families. We have great deep history together. Um, so although there's a coordinator change, there's a lot of continuity and consistency schematically with what we're gonna be able to do. And uh, really excited about DJ Mangus. Extremely innovative, extremely bright. I guess I could wrap it up by saying, you know, Cole Steiner's mom grabbed me after the spring game and said, this is as excited as Cole's ever been going into a season with, uh, uh, with uh, Ron Wickham being our quarterback's coach, DJ Mangus being our offensive coordinator. We were able to hire a big time running back coach and we love Greg Knox and wish him all the best. He's back at Mississippi State with his family. But Brian Applewhite, we hit it out the park with our running backs coach and experience coming over from Nebraska. Um, and you look at the defensive side of the ball, we were able to hire a Michael Caputo, who has, has great playing experience as a former sa safety at Wisconsin and playing in the NFL. And then an on the field position coach, he was at Utah State, hired him over from Wisconsin. He's bright, he's sharp. He's got a Jim Leonard background and that great pedigree there. Dave Aranda had nothing but great things to say about him. He was with Dave Aranda uh, at LSU. And just we just feel like we, 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 we uh, were able to hire a lot of great assistant coaches. Our team feels that way. I think the players feel that way. And, and um, um, we've just been taking it a day at a time and putting it together. Moms always know best, don't they? <laughs> right? If Cole Snyder's mom feels like he's yeah. as happy as he's ever been, 
that works for me. Coach Mo and I are here at the Floor and Decor, the grand opening here in Chictawaga of one of Buffalo's newest and best places to come for some home improvement. Great place, huge, great staff on hand here. Newest sponsor for UB Athletics. All right, let's talk a little bit about some of the players that people are going to see making those plays that are going to help you win this year. And normally we would always start with quarterback and offense, but I want to start with defense because the core of your D of your players and the outstanding players on this team, there seem to be more of them on defense, all Mac players at every level. Take me through under Coach Wright what you wanted to see differently about this defense and what the players that are playing it are going to be able to do better. I think we want to continue to play – that aggressive style of play that we've been been really known to play for over this last year. Top five in the nation in takeaways last year. Uh, you think about 133 Division I football teams. Well, there were four schools in the United States of America that were able to take the ball away more than us. We were number five in the nation. I think our ability to take the ball away is something we're going to continue to have to put an emphasis on and build on. Um, we want to continue to be multiple. Multiple looks, multiple fronts, multiple coverages, uh, conf confuse quarterbacks, cause hesitation with what they're going to see. Uh, be sound in what we're doing. We've been, we've been able to dive deep into our scheme in terms of objectively looking at our own selves. What do we want to add? What do we want to subtract? Um, hey, this was really good for us last year. How do we make it better? Uh, didn't call this as much last year. Do we need to carry it into spring? You know, sometimes you can make addition by subtraction and uh, always be fundamentally sound, always be technically sound. You know, I think our players are confident. You know, Jalen Bass is returning inside. George Wallow's returning inside. Damon Williams at the D-line. You got C.J. Bazil played going into year three with us again. Um, uh, you also have at defensive end, Kyler Lang coming off of injury. Max Michelle is back. Talented young guy in Cam Olds is back. And then we were able to recruit Jair Stevens, who's an all-conference player in FCS coming over to us now. We feel like we got a lot of healthy bodies at that D-line spot. You look at those linebacker positions with Sean Dolak leading the nation in tackles. Joe Andreessen was an FCS All-American. Khalil Murdoch, he's done a phenomenal job at the linebacker spot. Great special teams player for us. We were able to recruit and sign uh, Gio from ju junior college is a name you guys are going to see um, at the linebacker spot as well. And the secondary continue to be long and athletic. Um, uh, we were able to have Demetrius Harris come over from Cornell, who's a starter from Cornell as a grad transfer, come over. Marcus Fuqua continue to build on the season he had. The two starters with, at, at corner in the bowl game are both back. Trey Hines starting at corner. Caleb Alford starting at corner. Have a great, healthy competition at nickel. Jalen McNair seems to be leading that spot right now. Um, those guys are continue, continue to prove it throughout camp. So we feel like we're aggressive attacking all, at all three levels. We had an all-conference player preseason right now at all three levels. Uh, we got to continue to build. We got to continue to have that physical nature, that physical mindset, and uh, and continue to stop people. You've been around this game long enough to know that part of being good at taking the ball away, top five in the country, always amounts to a little bit of luck, right? And it may be one of the hardest things to be consistently good at, right? Sometimes teams leave top five in the country and then the, the balls don't bounce the right ways the next year. Have you thought about that? Have you used your experience? And what are you doing with your guys to try to continue that? Because that was such a, it's such a big part of any good defense. Yeah, I think when you look at yourself and you start building the identity of who you want to be and how you want to play, well, we start a little bit statistically. Let's look at some numbers. Let's look at ourselves against the run, against the pass. Um, where do we need to improve? I think just from an understanding of scheme and from a continued improvement in our fundamentals and technique, an area in our rush defense, a number we want to continue to trim down, I think that number is going to come down because of the experience we have, guys understanding what their job responsibilities are and, and really what their assignment is and how we want to, you know, let's look at the explosive plays we had against ourselves. How did they occur and what do we need to do to cut some of those down? So that's taking place. We are always going to make the ball one of the paramount things that we talk about in our program. 
protecting the ball, taking the ball away. Uh, that's one of the number one indicators in the outcome of a game. So as you mentioned, yeah, a little bit of the ball bouncing your way, but it's also something we emphasize. It's something we train and practice every single day. Um, we want to continue to add to our pass defense. We were one of the better teams in the nation in pass efficiency defense. Um, continue to be, be able to show multiple looks, show quarterbacks a lot of concepts, a lot of schemes. But then ultimately, you want to execute at a high level. Cut down your MAs. Do your job down in and down out. Eliminate big plays. Be an attack of it, attacking and downhill, aggressive uh, play style type of defense. And, uh, and just be sound in what you're doing. All right, let's flip it over to the offensive side of the ball as we continue to preview the season here with Coach Maurice Linguist. Uh, we mentioned a new coordinator, so there's going to be a little bit of a different feel, a little bit of a different look. But how much of having Cole Snyder back for his second year as a starter? Remember, last year, first year yep. starter, hadn't started since high school. Right. How much might that be the most important part of the progression of the offense? Well, you look at the quarterback position in college football, pro football, it is, a, it is a big indicator in, in terms of how your team's gonna perform. Usually your team is gonna be about as tough as the quarterback position. And then you also wanna continue to, to raise all of the people that surround the quarterback, raise their game up to support that quarterback position the right way. Cole, Cole Snyder operates at such a high level. He's a first one in, last one out type of guy. And I think when your leader and one of your best players and one of your best people operates that way, it, it, it allows your program standard to reach a really high ceiling. It, it allows every person around Cole to continue to operate at a high level the way he does. I think from an on-the-field play standpoint, he's going to continue to be more confident because of how he was able to finish the season. You look at the Akron game, we won that Akron game off his arm. You look at the bowl game, we won our bowl game against Georgia Southern off of his arm. You know, we, you know as much as the game has changed, here's things that are still true about the game. Uh, you really run the control of the game, you throw to win the game. And we were able to win those two games at the end of the season because of Cole's confidence, his arm came alive, his connection with Justin Marshall, his connection with Keon Williams. We also have some new receivers that are stepping up that are talented, just a little unproven right now. So we got to continue to raise the level of play around Cole, but him being a full-time starter, going through that entire season, taking the lumps that come along with being that regular starter, he was one of the few quarterbacks in the nation that took that started all 13 games, that stayed uh, healthy throughout the season that was able to respond the way a, a, a real quarterback with grit is able to respond when you have an off game how do you come back off of it and I think for those reasons the locker room believes in him and I think ultimately when you look at the quarterback spot here's the question you have to ask do the guys in that locker room believe do they believe when he's out there and I think right now the way he's operated coming off the ball win going into the spring going through that summer grind and the, the, the energy and the real energy in that locker room, they believe in him. And I'm excited about the year I, I believe he's going to have. Just the third UB quarterback in history to throw for 3,000 yards in the season was Cole Snyder. You mentioned a lot of new weapons, both at the receiver and the tight end position. Who are some of those guys that we're going to see catching those well-thrown and accurate Cole Snyder passes? Well, look, we've talked about like our ability to we feel like we uh, acquire great talent in terms of number one ranked recruiting classes. And I think one thing you're going to see right now, um, a guy like a Nick McMillan, who was one of these big recruiting wins for us a year and a half ago, he was quietly and sneakily had a really, if you came to the bowl game, he had a couple touchdown receptions in the bowl. Spring game. Excuse me. Yeah. I apologize. Spring game. Thank you. In the spring game, had a couple touchdown receptions in the spring game and just is learned. He had an opportunity to learn from a Justin Marshall, learn from a Keon Williams. And, and I think he's in a really good, healthy space right now. A Booby Curry, who was a big recruiting win, had injuries throughout the season last year. He's healthy. He's ready. I think he's gonna. He's in a good spot, and we're really excited about what he's gonna bring to the table. Marlon Johnson's coming back. Um, you look at a guy like we brought to the uh, coach's caravan last night. A DJ Harding transferred over from Duke. He's six four. He's long, lanky. He can do a lot of things. We have a lot of great pieces that are gonna be surrounding Cole. Um, unproven right now. 
really talented, and now we got to go prove it. we got to go do the work on a day-in and day-out basis, get ourselves ready. You know, we're about five weeks away, and, and go make true what we know we have the ability to do. What are your next recruits maybe on the phone? If this phone One. rings in my pocket, <laughs> I'm disappearing <laughs> because it may be a recruit. I'll come back, but um, we don't miss those calls. You talked about, you know, running, the, the, the importance of the running game, and we saw that last year. Ron Cook, outstanding. Mike Washington, outstanding. Spurts from Al J. Henderson, right. where he looks like he is going to be a game-breaker. All those guys are back. You got more guys. Give me a sense of where the running game's at. You know, a, a position that we felt like, um, you know, you look at about a year and a half ago, how do we continue to improve this position? Well, you got to continue to develop the guys that are in-house and then be able to attract talented guys to, to, to add to your roster. We have a Mike Washington back who is in as healthy a place mentally, physically. He's 225 right now. He just broad jumped about 10 feet um, in our last testing numbers. He had a really great spring, and I think he's ready to turn the corner. I think he's ready to build off of that 600-something yards he had last year. Ron Cook is back, uh, had a really strong year last year. He's healthy, um, had some injuries down later in the season last year. He's back. Al J. Henderson, you know, guy like took that 80-yard run against UMass. He's got juice. And then we were able to go recruit. You know, Lamar Sperling, who was Mr. Ohio, rushed for over 3,000 yards, not in his career, in his senior year, mm -hmm. in one year. Mm -hmm. And we were able to recruit a guy like that. We were able to add a couple older guys. Dylan Kesador was a JUCO All-American at the running back position. And then uh, Jacquez Barksdale is another name that we were able to recruit from a junior college rank. So we, we feel pretty deep and talented at that position. Uh, Mark Anthony Scott, who played sparingly, sparingly for us last year as well, got a number of guys. We feel like we're deep. We feel like we're talented. And uh, you guys know one thing true about, you know, University at Buffalo and UB Bulls, we're going to run the ball. Yeah, and you're, and you're going to turn out good running backs. Uh, up front, three starters are back. Got a few f holes to fill in. Gabe Wallace leads the way there. What's your thoughts on the offensive line? I was able to go with Gabe uh, across the border um, a couple weeks ago. Gabe just got married. Ah, good for him. Just got Congratulations, married in Toronto, Gabe. married a Canadian girl, sweet girl, and I was able to pop over and we went to Gabe's wedding and, nice. and, and saw him and saw him walk down the aisle. You know, it's kind of when you start seeing the process of guys and, 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 and his maturity and so excited He's used about to leading, he's leading used to in lead. a direction, I right? said, now you're leading, you're leading the household, <laughs> so I'm excited for him. And he's back. He's healthy. He tripped about 15 pounds, and I think he's going he's gonna to have a big-time year. Isaiah Wright started all games for us as a, as a transfer over from Rutgers at, at the tackle position. He's, um, he's as, as confident and healthy as we've seen him be, and – He's coming back for another year and, and uh, really excited about what he's going to bring to the table. Um, you see Tyler Doty. Tyler Doty was able to take over that full-time starting position in that early part of the season. And then just he saw his game rise throughout the year. And he's healthy. He's confident. So we got those three guys back. And then you look at uh, what we were able to do in terms of JUCO recruiting at the guard position. We were able to sign uh, an, another signee there. Um, and we're going to fill in that role. Don Polizzi looks like he's leading the way at center right now. Um, and we've got to continue to build the depth. You know, offensive linemen is a position where the depth, you can talk about the starting five, but it's really that, that top eight to ten that you kind of continue to develop and build. We're, we're continuing to formulate that right now, and I feel like we're in a good spot. All right, back me up with Alex McNulty when I tell him we always save the best for last year in case he wonders why it took so long to get to the reigning Max Special Teams Player of the Year. Yeah. But how much does – we saw last year you had no hesitancy to throw him out there to get you points, and in most cases he delivered. How much does that change – the dynamic of a team, of an offense, of a play caller, of a defense, to know that you've got such a good kicker and a great punter in Anthony Venere who grabbed that job last well, year. We, we, we pride ourselves in playing complimentary football. Um, you know, if you, if you watched our bowl game, it was a great example of that, how the offense affect the defense. The defense was able to affect the offense. You play really, really well on special teams. You're able to flip the field, score points with Alex McNulty, flip the field with Anthony Venneri, and it's really a, it's really, it's the essence of complimentary football. Um, you look at us on special teams. I mean, Alice, Alice McNulty, all he does is he like wins an award every month. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was just named uh, the uh, SUNY Student Athlete of the Year. He was Max Special Teams Player of the Year. Um, he was, you know, ever since, if you really look at uh, about a year and a half ago, when he was able to knock in that field goal 
two years, two seasons ago against Ohio. Right. And we won that game at the end of the season against Ohio off of his foot. I mean, he's almost been automatic. His confidence is through the roof. He earns his confidence because he's a process guy. He's through, he, he earns it through consistency. Um, he's a guy when he kicks, he knows it's going to go in. He doesn't hope it's going to go in. And, and it's able for – the thing that we're able to do is when you're, you're looking at our season, we played in I think 10 of our 13 games were one-score games. Right. And, uh, and we had a lot of one-score wins, and, and it's the essence of being going – Going the ability to go out there and knock in a field goal when you have to go knock one in, or flip the field in a big time punt when you have to flip the field. Um, we feel like you know Evan Davis snapping the ball, the consistency with which he does that. Um, it's it's it is really. I mean, we are quietly really 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 strong in those areas, and and we know it's going to all pay big dividends for us throughout the season. Season starts on September second at Wisconsin. First. Not four games of the season are non-conference, home to Fordham, home to Liberty at Louisiana. Then the MAC schedule kicks in. Last week at MAC Media Day, coaches poll comes out. You guys are right there, not all that far behind Ohio, picked to win the East, right in that clump of the best four teams in the MAC. Give me a sense of what you think the battles in the MAC are going to be like this year. Yeah, we know that Mac Toledo game on Halloween, because I think a lot of people think Toledo is the team that everybody's going to try to beat. Boy, that, that's already, to me, the game of the year, and we're just sitting here right. in, in July. Well, we, we know, um, you know, you, when you get into league play, the, the coaching is so good in this league. Uh, the talent continues just to continue to raise in this league. If you look over a, a three- or four-year study, we've had a, as many guys going to the NFL from the Mid-American Conference as the Sun Belt which is known to be a long and athletic league that's over there in the South. And um, the, the, the players that are coming out of this league are just continuing to get better and better every single week. And uh, the coaching is razor thin. You know, the margins are razor thin. So here's what, here's what we do. We turn internal. And we know that we, we have to really take it a day at a time. We have, and what does that mean? Can we be a better football team, you know, tomorrow than we were today? Uh, uh, more fundamentally sound. Uh, being able to build our depth all the way through because when you're playing long seasons, when you're playing championship football, r the reality of it is is your season starts in er early August and it goes all the way through the end of December. So everyone kind of pays attention sometimes to your top 22 and your specialists, but it's the next 20 and the next 20 after that that we have to continue to raise up to be prepared in the moment when we need them prepared. Um, there's going to be an unsung hero somewhere in that locker room that maybe we're not mentioning right now that's going to step into a starting game on a Tuesday night that we're going to need to make a big-time play for us. So we coach them all. We raise the floor. We raise the ceiling. We continue to develop our depth. We know certain things have to be true about us, our mindset, our identity, our attitude. We get into conference play. Um, it's razor thin. Uh, but we're going to take them one week at a time get ourselves ready to go for training camp, uh, come out of training camp extremely healthy, get ourselves ready for a big, talented, long, athletic Wisconsin team. Come back at home. We need you guys at home against Fordham. We need you at home against Liberty. Two home games that are going to be critical yep. for us, critical for us as we, as we go down on the road against Louisiana Lafayette, a team coming off a bowl game. You look at Fordham coming off a playoff. You look at Liberty coming off of a bowl game, Wisconsin bowl team. We get in the MAC play early on. We have Central Michigan and, and Akron. Um, at Akron, Central Michigan at home. We know Central Michigan is going to rebound. They're going to be long and athletic. Akron continues to raise the floor. Mm -hmm. Joe Moorhead's doing an outstanding job there. Um, and, and then we're getting into the thick of it. So we know what, there's going to be certain things that have to be true about us. We got to grow. We got to build. We got to be steady in the storm. We got to take it a day at a time, and uh, we're really, really excited about what, where we are and what we're going to be able to do this year. Excited to get it going. As uh, Mo mentioned, uh, you can tell he's excited. Training camp starts for the Bulls on Thursday, August 3rd, season opener, November or September 2nd, rather, at Wisconsin. Always good to catch up with you. Always good to get the latest update on the season. Can't wait till it all gets kicked off. Grab something nice for uh, Stacy and the kids, uh, you know, uh, on the way on the way out here to bring home well, to them today. I'm, I'm, I rode over here with John Fuller. I'm sitting down with Paul Peck again. <laughs> that means it's football time. That is right. It's football season. That is right. And maybe maybe I get some hardwood floors on yeah, the way out. Yeah, there you go. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like. We, uh, we have enjoyed being here at the grand opening of Floor and Decor in Cheektowaga, one of Western New York's newest must 
see places for home improvement, and we thank them for being our host. Thank you for being a part of this. Can't wait to uh, get it going here in the next couple weeks, Mo. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Look forward to seeing you again on the sidelines. Appreciate uh, you listening to this week's edition or this edition of the In the Bullseye podcast. And, of course, for those of us watching or those of you watching live on YouTube, thank you very much for being a part of it as well. If you're still on YouTube, we're going to stick things around here because now we're going to talk to the real boss of the show today, Justin Pease, who is, you got an awesome title, and I want to make sure I get it right, uh, Justin, Go Chief for. Executive Merchant, Absolutely. which means you're the big boss here at Floor & Decor, right? Uh, it means I get in charge of 45 people, and they get to tell me what to do all day, <laughs> so it's great. It's fun for me. Well, you know, you're a former college football player, as you and I were talking, so you kind of yeah. know how that works, right? It's fun. It's fun, you know. Everybody listens to their coach, and, you know, I've got a lot of great coaches here. Um, my wood manager came from LL Flooring. My pro manager came from Tile Shop. We have a great assortment. They know what they're doing. There's a lot of knowledge in this building. That's what we built here. All right, so because this is the first Buffalo location for Floor & Decor, uh, there, there may be some people who want to know what you guys are all about. Why, why is this the place? I mean, the name says an awful lot, but give everybody an idea why this is the place they want to come to first. I mean, first and foremost, I mean, this is an 80,000 square foot building. I keep almost a million square feet in stock at all times. It's one of the largest retailers specialty of hard surfaces. What you're used to seeing in Home Depot, Lowe's and everything like that, three, four aisles, that's what I put in 80,000 square feet. All right, you've got so many options for hardwood, so many options for engineered, vinyl, tile, lots of nice water jets. And of course, we have everything to finish the project. You're gonna have your vanities, all your nice new lighting, all your fixtures that you're gonna need, and I keep it in stock, all right? So when you're ready to buy your project, you have the option. You can take it with you right then and there. You come back with your contractor, have them pick it up. Whatever you wanna do, we're here for you. Um, give everybody uh, a sense of what sort of the process is. Somebody walks in the door and they're like, hey, I wanna redo my bathroom. I wanna redo my, my den or my entrance way. Uh, your guys are gonna help them in what ways? So, I mean, there's a lot of different options here. All right, so you have a design team that I keep on staff at all times. So there's a designer, whether it's somebody who's gone through design school, somebody who's still in design school, people who've graduated design, natural leaders in this industry who just know a lot about the product. They are all here to help you put together what you find on Pinterest and everything like that. You know, HDTV is great, except for they don't tell you what the product is. You take the picture, you bring it into my team, they'll put it all together for you. You come over, we have our pro team. Our pro team is based 100% around our contractors. Anybody who does this for a living, we're here to support you. That's what we're here to do. All right, we wanna make sure that everybody who's doing this is making as much as they can, and we wanna make sure that we can help. We're talking with Justin Pease. He is the chief executive merchant here at Floor & Decor. We are part of their grand opening here in Cheektowaga, just off the thruway, uh, the old thruway mall for the longtime Western New Yorkers. will know this is kind of where you guys are at. What is it about the Buffalo market that uh, 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 connects with this store? Is, you know, are, 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 are the people here the kind of people that want to get down and dirty and do a little bit of their own home improvement? Absolutely. So we offer Saturday classes. We're going to teach you how to do everything all right, I also have people in this building that wanna do it for you. All right, so we have our own installation made easy program. It is separate from our company, but we have contractors that'll come out, they'll do the measurements, they'll tell you how much it'll cost to do that, or you come in and you learn from one of my display builders or one of my assistant managers here that'll teach you how to actually install every project that you're looking for. Whether it's you know putting in a shower pan system, which is super difficult if you don't know what you're doing, to hey, maybe I just wanna learn how to do a backsplash and we'll teach you how to do that here too. Um, we were, you're, you were listening to Coach Mo a little in the earlier part of our interview and, and the part of being a good coach is always staying on the cutting edge of what's new and what's different. And, you, and Coach Mo talked about making some staff changes, bringing in a different attitude for his offense. Uh, what's, what's the new cutting edge stuff in your world as the head coach here? What, what do you have to learn to make uh, sure that your team uh, knows what it needs? I mean, my biggest thing is I'm staying on top of design options. I mean, I have to watch and see what's all new and trendy in the design world. Uh, we're staying on top of things. You know, green is one of the popular colors this year. You know, making sure that we have lots of different options. When you come into our store, you're gonna see a lot of different sizes. So 
You're used to seeing a one foot by two foot. We stock a lot of two foot by four foots. We stock four foot by four foot squares. You know, things that a lot of companies don't carry, that's what we do here. Uh, we wanna make sure that the new exciting things are here. They're shown, they're beautiful. I mean, when you walk in, first thing you do, you turn to the left and you see 34 different display options showing you how many options we have here. That's pretty cool. My wife is a big fan of the HGTV and all the shows, which means then that filters back to me. And I think the one thing she always brings up to me is the flooring options are incredible now. You can get wood that looks like tile. You can get tile that looks like wood, colors, all that stuff. Uh, is that sort of one of the biggest innovations in your world about how those different options have developed? Absolutely. I mean, you, you walk our showroom, you're going to see a lot of different vinyl options. I mean, that's one of the big things that you're going to see here in Buffalo. Uh, we stock, I think it's 200 SKUs of vinyl, if I remember correctly. I'm sorry. Um, that is in stock, ready to go almost a thousand square feet at all times of those products and then getting the tile looks all right everybody's used to having porcelain tile and everything like that but everybody wants to make it easier on themselves now so we're working on that we're getting as many click together porcelain or uh, vinyl options that we can we're happy to have you as the newest sponsor for ub athletics what what what, what appeals to you guys about being connected with you being the bulls and football and all the other great sports and athletics that are going on on campus i mean the huge following that you guys have i mean anybody who's part of buffalo stays part of buffalo nobody leaves you know whether you are living in a different city or wherever you are you're still part of the university of buffalo you're proud people and that's one thing that we we noticed here coming in you know buffalo is very very honest and very true to who they are and man it's it's like a whole family you know i've never been in a town where everybody is family and that's what this is, it feels like in Buffalo. You've spent a decent amount of time here. Now you're, you're coming back to be in charge of this store. What's, it, what, what's different? What have you noticed about Buffalo from the last time you were here? How much it's growing. It's, it seems like there's always a new thing popping up. You know, when I, I left here four years ago to move to New Jersey and now seeing what has changed, you know, driving down the road, I, I can call my wife and say, hey, this just opened, this just opened. It, it seems like... Buffalo is really catching up and it feels like a major city. All right, give, me, give everybody an idea of what you got going on here. I know as we record this here on Thursday, it's the grand opening, but I know you've got a whole bunch of events to take you through the weekend. Yes. Uh, give anybody that's watching or is going to watch this, to what do they need to know about the next couple days here? So, 2.30 today, we are, we're cutting the ribbon, all right? So we are going to invite everybody over, have some, you know, little food trucks. You know, it'll be all here, ready to go. There's three or four chambers. Big scissors. We got big scissors. Big scissors. You somebody, probably stock those, don't you? Uh, listen, I don't stock them. <laughs> uh, we are going to have somebody else cut them today. <laughs> I'm not very good with the scissors. You'll learn that. All right. I'm not the installer, I promise you. Um, then the weekend, you know, Saturday, first 200 people that come to this store here get an opportunity to win a million dollars. All right. You roll some dice. You spell floors. You win a million dollars. No catch. Awesome. That's all it is. Love roll it. the dice. Win. Um, you get three out of the five letters, you win some money, you win, you get four out of the five, you win. So it's a little bit of everything. All right. So uh, th th this is the place to be here in Chictawaga over the next couple of days. Yeah. So we are prime, we are prime get stuff done absolutely. season, right? School's coming back yeah, in another absolutely. month. You know, it's uh, football starts another month. So we got a window here. If you yes. want to get these projects done, now's the time, right? Yes, absolutely. I mean, and again, it's in stock. It's ready to go. You can get the honeydew list done before the kids go back to school or before you have to go and actually start <laughs> calling all the games. Yeah, sorry. well, hopefully, I, I can't wait till you come over to the UB Stadium for one of our games. Hopefully, I'll sound a little more like I'm supposed to sound uh, as the voice of the Bulls. But it's been a pleasure getting to know you. It's been a pleasure to be a part of this. Hope you enjoyed everything listening to Coach Mo. I, I'm, every time I sit next to Coach Mo, I, I, I can't wait to get out there and, and see you what's going on. You want to hit somebody on. yourself, yeah, right? You know, so you're well, okay. You're hey, right. you know, I'm too old for that oh. now. So Too old for that. So good luck with everything Thank here at the much. store come say hello to justin Absolutely. when you come in here thank you for joining us not only for the in the bullseye podcast record but live on youtube with coach mo and justin floor and decor the old throughway mall site on walden avenue and cheek Tawaga. grand opening all kinds of stuff going on here make sure you come on out here justin thank you bulls fans thank you as well for joining us on this edition of the in the bullseye podcast
Awesome. Thank you. Good work, my man. Good pleasure. Stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Go stock some flooring yeah. in natural habitat, right? Yeah. I know. That's Go like, work. You can only, they, they ask you to do these things, and for some people like me, 